about the importance of clean data when it comes to making sure all your ducks are in the row as it, as it relates to an, an evaluate, evaluation and, and the potential sale of, a, of an agency? So to give you guys a little backstory as to why I'm up here, um, it's incredibly difficult to, to book guests to speak at these events. And so myself, Ben Smith, Ali DeVos, and George, Dr. George Burroughs um, formed a speaker committee this year to, to head up that, that facet of the luncheon. And Jake would not be here if it wasn't for Ali DeVos. So give Ali a hand. For, for, for putting this all together and uh, during one of our meetings where Jake's name came up and said you know what would be really good is you know I go to a lot of conferences and um, the fireside chat format is really enjoyable because you can kind of somewhat get the audience interacted it takes a little bit of pressure off the speaker and uh, everybody said great you're gonna do it so that's that's uh, that's how I ended up here so be careful what you wish for talk about the talk about the Derek Jeter story you told a second ago that gave me chill bumps well, that, that was the first time I felt like I belonged. When you're talking about my debut, yeah, I'd lived uh, a long time and, and years for this moment. You finally get that moment, and it's in front of 60,000 people, and, and, and there is huge nerves in this moment. You're just, you're, you're young, you're wondering if you belong. You know everybody's name. You've watched them in the lineup that you're facing and, and, and getting prepared for it. It's not like a, a normal, big league start that you've been up there and you've prepared for it. You just got called up two days prior. You're just kind of giving us some information. I remember Bruce Bochy that day going, look, bud, I called over to Vegas and nobody's betting on us. <laughs> just go have fun. You know, there's nobody that thought that 100 lost Padres were getting ready to beat the, the world champion Yankees. And in that, that game, the very first pitch I threw, you're just trying to settle in that game like we talked about, and it's hit off the wall. I'm watching Soriano swing to pitch of the game and he's standing on second and that crowd's going crazy. At that point in time, my catcher called fastball again. I said, no, <laughs> that, that one didn't work. And I threw a slider and Derek Jeter swung and missed. I went, okay, let's throw that one again. I did it again. He swung and missed. And I did it for the third time and he swung at three straight pitches and missed. And then all of a sudden I felt like, oh my gosh, if I can make this guy swing and miss, I, I think I can do this. And truly, that, that moment, it's funny you guys talked about that, it was just really, I guess, the first moment that I actually believed I belonged where I was. Um, and crazy day, but my internal dialogue, I think, when I'm always playing, and, is being true to yourself and letting, I think athletes, I know this for 100% fact, we coached the seventh and eighth grade team, you gotta prep and practice. You gotta prep before your business meetings and be ready. But when you go into those things, you have to let who you are and your authentic self and your true self come out. And I, I'm not a business person. I'm not a, a person that's well spoken. But I'll, before I do take meetings, I will try to be as uh, prepped as I can possibly be and shoot holes in my story or what I'm trying to do. Get a lot of opinion. But then when I walk in, I get a chance to sit down with the mayor or somebody like that of importance. I get nervous. When I do my best is when I just let it, when I'm myself. And so I always tried to do that in baseball. I would get ready, but then when it was time to go, you're just competing as your authentic self. Execute. That's right. Execution is execution is key in, in, in the world. We, as the Gulf Coast community, are not like the rest of the part of the state. I love Birmingham, but we're totally different than Birmingham, Montgomery, Huntsville. The word, I, I was asked to give one word for this community, and it was brackish. I thought, you know, that we are a very progressive uh, for where we're at. And, and then we're made up of a lot of different people, from Bala Battery to, you know, all the way to Fairhope to wherever it may be. So. I wanted us to come up with a name. I, I, I pitched Oyster Republic. I don't care what this name is. But what I wanted us to do was get have a flag to rally around. I thought that if the mayor stood up and said, we are the sovereign nation of the Oyster Republic, you get a couple of these people to stick this Oyster Republic flag in the ground. We, off the backs of that, put on community events all around this thing, around sports, around music, around technology, around food. And you're doing these things with inclusive mindset and perspective and bringing all classifications and demographics together and you're doing this all under the 
Oyster Republic flag or whatever you call yourself, it, now we have a chance to bring, yeah, I live in Mobile, I'm a Sarah Land, I love Austin West Road, and I, you know, or, or it's not these pockets of resistance when you talk to people like, we're not against Simpson, against Sarah Land, why, why? You know, and so that's really what I want to see happen for Mobile, what I'm currently working on is trying to, to bring events to the community, all around our community, around things that are meaningful. Uh, I love and I'm passionate about entrepreneurship and us giving our college kids the mindset of, of creating and starting your own business. I just want us to find a flag to rally around and us to understand that everybody in this room loves <coughs> Gulf Shores and Orange Beach and Bear Hope and as much as they love Sarah Land. And, and, and I want us to all claim this Gulf Coast and, and try, to, um, try to come together and, and do it with an inclusive mindset. Sorry for talking so much. <laughs> well, and to add to that, um, agents that are listening to this, this is not us just talking to another carrier. Um, and I'm gonna prove that, and I've said this for a while, but I got a, I got a DM this morning, Ty, from an agent that I, I, don't, I don't know, we chatted some online, and he sent me a message and said, Bradley, I know you mentioned several times, you think a lot of openly, I'm curious what makes you think so highly of them. I'm located in Illinois, so I'm thinking about trying to get on the ground floor with them. I said, hey, Dan, I said, there's a lot of good things I can say about them, especially their policy, guaranteed replacement costs, coverage for Airbnbs, et cetera. I said, but in short, and I've said this, the listeners of the podcast, I think you've heard me say this, it's a matter of time before one of these insure tech carriers comes along and gets it right and becomes the next travelers, the next Liberty, the next Nationwide, the next auto owners. It's going to happen. Like, there's no doubt it's going to happen. And I said this to Dan, I think Openly has as good of a shot to do that as anybody based on just trends that I've seen in the industry in the last 10 years and, you know, compared to what you guys are doing. So um, this is not just another carrier CEO that we're interviewing. This is something that I think every agent listening to this captive or independent needs to pay attention to. We need to decide, do we agree with the result? And then we need to have like, you know, a little leaf that comes off and it's like, okay, if we don't agree with the result, these are the steps. Okay. If we do agree with the result, he, with the result here are the steps. Now, so, should we go as far as <laughs> try speaking to the underwriters? Yeah, so. We're not understanding, I still believe I'm in the right contact rep. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> or go to Bradley and then contact Bradley. Basically. <laughs> go to Bradley, absolutely ruin his day. I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, You're so I think it needs to be um, do we agree? Yes, no. All right. Okay. If it's no, it's if it's no or maybe, it needs to be reach out to underwriter to, to discuss. Okay? Okay. Um, after that, it's call client. Let client know what's going on, and we're doing our best to get it resolved. Okay. Feel free to reiterate to client how dumb we think the decision is. Mm -hmm. Not that literally, but like. And then next is reach out to marketing rep and or underwriting supervisor, depending on the carrier. Okay. Call client back. Let client know what we've done. That makes them feel really good, and that takes the focus off of us being the bad guy and onto the underwriting. And hey, Bradley or Kenneth or Leith or Natasha, we are advocating for them. So call client back, direct it down. Call client back and let them know, and we'll let them know what what we find out. Um, and then ultimately reiterate the decision to the client. Okay. So this is going to be like an episode of MTV Cribs, but before, and then you'll have next time. <laughs> hey, will be, that's great. Next time will that's be great. The, will be the after. That's great. So this is kind of my oh, that's killer, dude. Loungy area right now. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I like the drawing on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, about three hours ago, I got to wear a Boston Red Sox World Series ring. With Jake Peavy's ring. Yeah. Nice. I was sitting beside him on the table and he took it off and sat it down. I grabbed it, took a picture, and put it back before we saw it. <laughs> and then he brought it in. I was like, yeah, no, yeah. Like, I could do like, uh, uh, you know, Vladimir Putin stole Robert Kraft's Super Bowl ring. 
He just took, put it on, and walked off. Yeah, I could have like totally done that and never would have seen it. Robert, you said Robert Kraft's? Robert Kraft's Super Bowl. When was that? Two or three years ago. That's or, or more than two or three years ago. Yeah, they said like, he said, can I try your ring? He did it in front of him. Like, can I try your ring on? Puts it on, security guards come up, walks away, and he's like, what in the world? I'm sure they're friends. Uh, no, I don't know. I so. Like, it was like, he's like, he straight up stole it. Did he get his ring back? No, he stole it. Yeah, look it up. It's like, true story. Did. Yeah, true story. Yeah. Didn't send him any money later on as a purchase. Mm -hmm. That's so, nice. I mean, if you're, I want to give a shout out real quick to my friends, the Hot Ivers from Charleston, South Carolina. 